have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Can't be caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Can't be caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was created for worship. That was none other than Cedric Four. Glory to God, awesome man of God. I was created for worship. And this is Shabbat Saturday, and we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For worship, that we have the opportunity to come before you and to Shabbat you on today. Hallelujah. Did you know that, people of God, that is what the Father wants for, from us. He wants our worship. Hallelujah. So we come and we Shabbat him. Glory to God. The word says in Revelations 4.11, you are worthy, O Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor and power. Hallelujah. He created all things, people of God, and by his will, they exist and were created. We were created to worship the Lord. So we lift up our hands and we bless his name on today. We Shabbat him on today. He is Elohim. Hallelujah. He is Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sikkanu, Jehovah Mekedesh. He is El Elyon. Hallelujah. The most high God. I am that I am. And so we Shabbat him on today. Well, hey, miss you all. This is your host of Shabbat Saturday, Apostle Dawn, and that's what we do every Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And and look, I want to thank you, all of you that have been giving well wishes and condolences for my beautiful Molly, my mom, amen, the family and I. We thank you. We love you. You have been so gracious to us, and we say God bless you. But today, a very special Shabbat Saturday. We are excited. We have been waiting in anticipation for none other, our featured guest, Prophet Ken Jackson, the founder and executive director of House of Bread Word Line on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and the CEO and founder of Maintain Anointing Deliverance Ministries on Sundays in Douglasville, Georgia. Prophet Ken Jackson, are you with us, sir? Yes, ma'am, I'm with you. Amen. We love you, man of God. We thank you for being here on this very special day. People of God, listen, you can put the X on the calendar because it is not going to be the same. Hallelujah. There is going to be a great shaking in the heavenly realm. We have been waiting, I think, almost two and a half weeks for this word to come forth. Hallelujah. And the man of God has been given the authority to speak and say something. So we're here to Shabbat, our awesome God, and to encourage you, our listening audience on today. Yes. Because this is the day that the Lord has made, and we have been created to worship him, created to lift him up, created to rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, we don't come for no other reason. Not trying to build a platform, not for self-aggrandizement, amen, but to inspire you, to move you in the realm of his glory. Hallelujah. And with that being said, it is now the set time. Prophet Ken Jackson, you are released, man of God, and Shabbat the Lord and bless the people. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. I just want to, first of all, thank God, who is my life, for another opportunity to come and share the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. I give honor to also Apostle. P.D. Westbrook, amen, and with Shabak Ministries live radio broadcast every Saturday. I thank God for the opportunity just to come and just share some things with you, amen. We all know that we have been in the past over weekend, amen, and we had Palm Sunday last week, amen, and I know, and I just want to just share a couple of things today. Amen. Just to give the people of God encouragement 
to be strengthened in a time when it seems like there's no hope, sometimes when it seems like there's despair, seem like I don't I got older now and I still have not accomplished this. I want you to just hold on because God got something for you. Amen. There's a purpose attached to your name. Amen. Glory be to God. So I'm going to go quickly to the word of God. Amen. The book of Matthew, glory be to God. Matthew, brother Matthew, we're going to go with brother Matthew today. And we're going to go to the 21st chapter of Matthew. For those that might want to get it, I'll take a little time and so you can get it, amen. But that's Matthew, the 21st chapter. Amen. Well, that shouldn't be hard to find. That's the first synoptic gospel time you go into what they call the New Testament. Amen. I'm going to begin. I'm going to begin reading at verse number one. And it reads. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples. I want you to always know that God will always be the one that will send people for a divine purpose. Amen. It's not the authorization of man but it will always be the authorization of Jesus, of God Almighty, to send forth those that will fulfill his purpose. The Bible says he sent two disciples so that there will always be a witness, always be covenant, always be those that can come in agreement. Amen. How can two walk together except they agree? So in this season and hour of your life, Make sure you walk with somebody that can agree with you. Make sure you walk with somebody that know how to come in under covenant with you. Make sure you come and attach yourself to people or connect yourself to people that will believe the same way you believe. Amen. Glory be to God. And it, so verse 2 says, saying unto them, he's giving them instructions now. He's talking to the ones that he is sending out. Make sure you listen to nobody that have not taken the time to hear what God have given them. Don't let nobody just come on their own, just giving you a whole bunch of verbiage, and God have not yet spoken. Amen. Glory be to God. He said unto them, go into the village over against you. My God. He's given them words of wisdom as well as words of Knowledge, words of instruction, amen. He said, go into the village over against you and straightway, immediately, when you get to the place that I'm telling you, immediately you shall find an ass tied and a coat with her. Oh, my God. You're going to see a donkey and you're going to see a coat. My God, that's going to be right there with her. And a coat with her. And he say, loose them. I'm here to let you know that God is getting ready to loose the things that he has purpose for in this hour. <laughs> He's getting ready to take the restrictions off of those, glory be to God, that he is about to use in this hour. He, he tells them to loose them, untie them. Uh, they, they've been tied down. They've been restricted. They've been restrained. But now I, I'm commanding you to loose them because there is purpose and there is significance that in, they have in their life that I'm about to do something with them. Uh, you need to just say something to yourself silently and begin to just put your hand on yourself and say, God is about to do something with me. Or, uh -huh, I know you, you didn't want to do nothing with me, and, and I know that um you made me a whole bunch of promises, amen. You was like clouds without rain. You never fulfilled the things. You always got me built up and got me on a height, but, 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 but you never fulfilled what you said, and so therefore it began to make me feel 
feel sad and make me feel like maybe God don't have anything for me. Maybe I'm not significant. Maybe I'm not cut out to do this. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But I'm here to tell you there's good news. Glory be to God. God is ready to lose you. He's ready to take the restrictions off of your limited thinking. Take the restrictions off of tradition. Take the restrictions off of religious mindset people because he has a purpose for you. And you need to say, God is about to use me. Uh-huh. Yeah, me, me. Uh-huh. Yeah. You, 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 need, you need to speak that and prophesy that in your own spirit today. God is about to use me. My God. And the Bible says, and he told them straightway, <laughs> you're going to find an ass tied in a coat with her. And he said, loose them and bring them unto me. Uh-huh. He said, I need you to bring them to me. Don't, don't, don't try to keep them for yourself. Don't you try to um, um, give them some type of doctrine. Don't you try to put your little two cents upon them. But, but, but no, no, you need to bring them to me because this is not about you, but this is about me now. This is about what I'm about to fulfill in the earth realm at this particular time. So, therefore, I need something that seemed like it was restricted, seemed like it was tied down. Seemed like it had them given up. Seemed like, okay, my dream ain't going to never come to pass. I'm never going to write this book. The ministry is never going to take off. The business is still stagnated. I don't know what to do. I'm just like this donkey and this coat. Lord, I'm here, and I'm just tied up. Seemed like nobody is giving me an opportunity to preach. Seemed like nobody is calling me to come and do this or do that. Seemed like no doors have been opened. But I got good news. God is about to untie you. Good God of mine. Uh huh. And he said, Bring them if any man say aught unto you. Ye should say, The Lord hath need of them. He, he said, Now, just perhaps while you are unloosing them, and somebody happened to see you unloosing them, uh huh, and, and, and they want to know why are you untying them. You tell them that the Lord has need for them. I want to talk to some of these people that have been in some of these Pharaoh ministries. Amen. Uh, some of you people that have been tied up up under leadership, where leadership have now become almost like a coat, and where they're now trying to control you and brainwash you and put their foot on you and trying to run your life and run your home and run your personal business. Amen. Uh -huh. And they got you tied down and you up under some hip hypnotic spell, and when you don't understand, when you are up under a hypnotic spell, you only obey the voice of the hypnotizer, and so God is saying, I'm getting ready to loose you, and when I get ready to bring you from up under that hypnotic spell, and that hypnotic voice, and that controlled spirit of the people saying, my people, God said, it's not Oh my God. They don't belong to nobody. They belong to me. So, so, so God said, I'm calling what I died for. And when they want to know where you're going, you tell them, bring them to me. For I, somebody said, God, God is looking for me. My God. Oh, oh, oh. He said, tell them. You should say that the Lord has need of them. Somebody needs to say to themselves today, God has need of me. You did not know how to utilize me. You did not know how to tolerate. You tolerated me, but you didn't know how to celebrate me. You didn't know how to appreciate me. You took me for granted, uh-huh. And see, but you didn't realize when you was taking me for granted, that just only let me know that you understood that there was some significance about me. But the only difference was you was too immature to handle my words. Uh-huh. You didn't wait long enough to 
to see the value. You didn't wait long enough to see that one day God was going to untie me because he got need of me. So go ahead, do what you want to do, say what you want to say, but I will no longer be controlled. I will no longer be tied down to the traditions and rudiments of man, for the Lord has need of me. Good God Almighty. Mm. This, 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 everybody that felt like they was unloved and felt like they was unwanted and felt like they had no purpose, that ought to have been your shouting moment that the Lord has need of me. Instead of waiting on somebody to give you an opportunity, and waiting on, instead of you being a, some little guinea pig and being the putty in somebody's hand where they do you however they want to do you, just so you think you're going to get an opportunity to be used or get their platform, you don't need that for the Lord have need of you. Oh my God. This is this is this is something this is powerful people. Just to know that God has needs for me. You don't have to have needs for me, but God does. The Lord does. The Lord does. And the Bible says, and straightway he will send them. Verse four said, All this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, uh-huh, a donkey, uh-huh, and a coat, the foal of an ass, which means the baby of a donkey. This is something to think about. He says, so this is going to be fulfillment of prophecy. This is why I tell people that there will never be a prophecy that God will give you that you cannot tie with scripture. I'm so sick and tired of all these prophetic messages that do not relate to God's written word. See, even at this particular time, the reason that Jesus was sending them boys, the reason that those donkeys and the coat because you don't see nowhere else where it talks about a donkey and coat being together at the same time. But that was a prophetic word and that was a significance at this particular time that there will be a donkey and there will be a coat and they both will be tied up because it was prophetic. My God. It was prophetic. It was prophetic. And now he tells them Tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and he going to be sitting upon an ass, and a coat, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. He's looking for somebody that's going to come, that's going to obey what he commanded in this hour. And they brought the ass and the coat and put on them their clothes, and they sat him their own. That is significant and powerful to me because as we look at this here, particular passage, this was the time when Jesus is about to make his entrance through Jerusalem, and you know and they're going to be, you know, throwing the palm branches down, celebrating him and everything, because all of this is during the time where yet there still is Passover, because it's going to be leading up to his crucifixion and resurrection. And so now, as we begin to look at this particular chapter, there is some significance in it, because because this is what the psalmist in David was talking about in Psalms 118, where he say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Jews shout the words, they come from the book of Psalms, the 118th chapter. And now it's talking about how he will make his entrance before all of this. Jesus will be near in Jerusalem, and he will make a stop at the Mount of Olives. And now the disciples are given the command, and they are told what will be there when they get there. There's going to be a donkey, and there's going to be a coat. Now, why is it significant that there are two? Why were there two? Why can it just be one? There is a significance why there was two. And we begin to look at this Oh, glory be to God. 
And we begin to see prophecy in the making. We begin to see what Zechariah the prophet, when he began to talk about it in the ninth chapter, verse 9. Or I'm not going to go through all this and read, but I'll just give you, you can go back and read it. When, when, when he was saying, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and riding on a donkey and a coat, a fowl of a donkey. Now, we begin to look at the other gospels. It tells us about it in the synoptic gospel. Mark had a version of it. Luke had a version of it. Matthew had a version of it. And now, now we get down to the point that that, that was two. And, and, and some people want to know, why was there two? Oh, my God. Why? Why did the scripture mention two at this particular time? Even more interesting, it's not a second full-size donkey. Why would it be a baby coat? Why? Glory be to God. And why such a specific coat? Why did it have to be one that nobody had never sat upon? Because God is looking for something that have not been tainted with contamination and pollution and filth of man. He's looking for somebody that have not been indoctrinated with erroneous doctrine. He's looking for somebody that have not been filled up with the religious tradition system of this world. He's looking for somebody that he can use and only him. Glory be to God. That's what he's looking for. He's looking for something you are not tied down. So when he tells you something, you're not afraid to step out of the box. When he speaks something and gives you a command, you're not afraid of what people will say about you. When he tells you something, you don't mind obeying God when he comes. You are not contaminated with the filth and pollution of the religious system of this day. So he wanted something that had never been written on. Glory be to God. Now, as we know, if anybody know anything about scripture, know anything about Bible, know anything about the prophetic, like we got so many people claim they know prophetic, but, but, but they don't know how to connect the prophetic with scripture. And when you begin to look at this particular passage, there are countless prophecies that's in the Old Testament, and, 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 and they are easy to find if you go into the Bible. You'll see how when it, when, when it talks about um, when Isaiah, when he takes the virgin birth and prophesies by Isaiah centuries before it happened. And it was accurate because why? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit had a plan from the get-go. You got to understand that God got a plan from the get-go. It got nothing to do with man. He just chooses to use man to fulfill his purpose in earth. But it's not about up. It's about the Father. That's why the Bible says it's the Holy Ghost that will come upon holy men of God, and they will prophesy as the Spirit give them an action. I'm so tired of people prophesying where the Holy Ghost have not come on the scene. I'm so tired of people speaking out of the emotions, out of their own soulish realm. I'm so tired of hearing people speak presumptuous things, which means things that they are suspicious about and spoken before time without authorization by God. And so God is looking for somebody now that will be like the prophet Isaiah, where the Bible says in Isaiah the 15th chapter verse 4, when I wake in thy ear morning by morning, he said, I need somebody where I can wake in their ear. Somebody that got a keen ear to hear what the Spirit is saying in this hour, not what your idols are saying. My God. But, but, but what the Spirit is saying. So I'm going to wake it in your ear morning by morning. I'm going to give you a tongue of the learned. That word tongue of the learned means I'm going to give you a heavenly language. And when I say heavenly language, I ain't talking about He's talking about I'm going to give you a language that comes from the throne room of heaven to be able to speak a word in due season to the weary. The problem, we got so much word going out, but it's not a due season word to minister to our right now situation because when we look at our situation today and we see what people are still panicking, people are still dying and all kinds of things are going on, it's not the time where God is talking about cars and houses so much and never minister to the need of those that need to be healed, the dead need to be raised, souls need to be saved. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Why is the awakening ear this morning? So that's why he need him a virgin. 
something that have not been tampered with, something that have not defiled themselves. So this is why it's so important. And so scripture, it goes on and talks about all the different things that God spoke from the very beginning. Our three in one God has always existed. The first words of scripture says, in the beginning, God, which means that will nothing come, nothing will come before God. Everything that happens in heaven and on earth is going to start with God and it's going to end with God because he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and he's the end. He's the author and he's the finisher. Oh my God, God is awesome. So we must understand that we serve an awesome God. And he has spoken all these great things through the prophets of old. And this is why, as we continue to look at this, when Jesus quotes Isaiah to those that was around him at that particular time, he actually was quoting what he had already said beforehand to Isaiah. Isn't it amazing that Jesus had already spoken this to Isaiah before he even manifested in the flesh? Oh, my God. Do we give prophecy the respect that it truly deserves? When we consider looking at the words of the new covenant, Jesus descended from Abraham. When you open up the first significant gospel, starts out with the descendant from Abraham, that Jesus descended from Abraham. We know Abraham was the father of faith. They said, when you go on with this prophet, oh, y'all just stay right there. We riding, we riding this donkey. We riding this donkey, baby. We got to get out to where is that? Glory be to God. Oh, my God. He says he was descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, we knew, was the father of faith. And Abraham, he had many sons by three different women. Isaac had two sons. Jacob had 12 sons. When Moses began to write the genealogy of Jesus, it was almost probably 1,500 years before Christ ever came on the scene. Now, how could Moses know about this when Moses went around at that time? Oh, my God. But you got to remember that when Moses, he had got into a place with God, and he said, God, I want to see your face. And God said, you can't see my face and live. But when I pass by you, I will show you the hinder parts of me. And the hinder parts of God, it was the reflection and the past of God, what had already been done in history, revealed to Moses by divine revelation. And that's why he was able to write the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, New and Deuteronomy, which we know as the tall of the law. Moses wasn't there at Adam's birth, but he knew by divine revelation. My God. He knew by divine revelation. So now he's given the genealogy. He's given the history of the man that will come and require the two donkeys. Oh, my God. And so he, he begins to write these things down, and now we see Jacob, uh huh, who was known as Israel, as he began to prophesy to his 12 sons. Isn't it amazing that when he got down to Judah, he said, one designated Judah as the royal line. He said, the scepter should not depart from Judah uh uh-huh, until he comes to whom it belongs. Isn't it amazing? And to it comes, which is Christ. He said, these are Jacob's words about Christ nearly 2,000 years before he came on the scene. He said, I said ancient prophecy is accurate, people. You got to understand, prophecy is accurate when it comes from God. He began to talk about when he was given the prophecy, and that there will be to see a donkey, and never saddle a coat. They're not randomly spoken of when we see, when we coming up, when Jesus came through this Palm Sunday, getting ready to lead up to his crucifixion. It was prophesied when Jacob began to talk about it, that there will be, when he was given the prophecy to Judah, when he was given the prophecy to his children, and how he talked about the donkey and the coat. Mm. Something to think about. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence that Jacob speaks of Christ to his son Judah. Jacob also speaks of the coat and the donkey. Now, you need to understand the scepter will not depart from Judah until 
whom it belongs to. He said, he ties his donkey to a vine and the coat of his donkey to the choice vine. Now you see this in the donkey, which is the older one. It's been tied to the vine and the coat, which is the new one, the young one, the fresh one, the one that never been used, he will be to the choice vine. That's why Jesus needed both the donkey and the coat. Why? Because this was the fulfilled prophecy of Jesus' words being so plain. My God, he realized that when he came, the donkey and the coat upon which Jesus rode are the old and new covenants. They are both covenants that are tied together. Oh my God, because you cannot understand the new covenant without the reflection of the old covenant. So the old donkey that was tied up, that had been used, that had been represented, it was the old covenant that was tied up, getting ready to be loose from the new covenant, which was the young coat that he will ride on that will come through Christ. Good God Almighty. It's only gonna come through him. It's only that's why he got need for us. That's why that's why he got need for us. So just as the donkey gave birth to the coat, the old testament is pregnant with prophecies that is coming to life through the new covenant, which is through Jesus Christ. So this is why he ties the donkey to the vine and the and the coat to the choice vine. What is the vine? The vine is God tied the law of the Old Testament to his people. That's why he commanded Moses to give the law to his people. He said, but the, but, but, and that was to the Jews, my God. But the coat, which is the new covenant in Christ, it is for the choices of God's people, which is me and you and the whole world that he died for. This is why he says, I have need of you. I'm ready to ride on something now that I can put my presence on, something that I can rule and reign over, something that will give me the honor, something that will give me the glory, something that will not touch the three things that belongs to me. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, it belongs to me. Can I ride on somebody, glory be to God, that will allow my presence to rule and reign, somebody that will allow the anointing to destroy every yoke and remove every burden. Can I use somebody? That will let me be in charge and not flesh being in charge. Somebody that is willing to decrease that I may increase. Glory be to God. He says, so tell my people I got need for them. I got need for them. I got need. I got need. I got need. So so, so don't cry no longer. Oh, that church didn't use you. They did not let you be used. They did not allow your gift to be in operation. Uh -huh. God allowed it that way so that they would never be able to take credit of what you will become so that God would be the only one that would get the honor and that he would get the glory. And so now we see, now now that Jesus have come, he have fulfilled prophecy. Everything that we see, it was a prophecy. It was a prophecy that God would need something that had been tied up so that he could ride upon it. And he said, I'm looking for somebody in this hour. He said, I'm looking for the church now. He said, tell the body of Christ, I need them. The pandemic have been controlling. The pandemic have put you down like the coat. It have restricted your life. It have restricted everything about you. But God said, tell them, I need them. I have need of them. Do you not realize that the Bible says that the whole world, the whole earth and creature and manifest, they are waiting on the manifestation of the true sons of God. He said, do you not realize that the earth is waiting on you? You keep talking about what you want me to do. He said, but the earth is waiting on you. He said, oh my God. He said, did not I tell you that whatsoever you bind in the earth, how bind in heaven, whatsoever you loose on earth, how loose in heaven. So God said, stop permitting these things to be in the earth. So I have given you dominion. That's the purpose I rode through Jerusalem on the donkey. I rode there to let you know that I will be triumphing and I will be coming back to a church where I spot a wrinkle. I will be restoring the kingdom relationship that I gave Adam in the midst of the garden. He said it's time for my people to come back to the place where they will let King Jesus ride them. 
to a place of triumph, to a place of victory. He said, I'm looking for somebody that I can show myself strong in. I'm looking to show somebody that I'm still a healer. I'm looking to show somebody that I'm still a deliverer. I'm looking to show somebody that I still got all power in my hand. I'm looking to show somebody that the blood still works. I'm looking to show somebody that holiness is still right. I'm looking to show somebody. He said, so tell them I have need of them. You've been tied down for over a year now. And you have made excuse after excuse of why we can't do this and why we can't do that. He says, is that anything too hard for God? Did not I tell thee in my word that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God shall abide up under my shadow? Did not I say that even when the pestilence come, that there be a thousand by the right side and 10,000 by this side, but none should come now by dwelling. Did not I say that I would even heal your water and your food, that no sickness or disease will come among thee? He said, did not I say that I have given thee power? Oh, my God. And it's only for the believer. I say, I need somebody. But I can't use you if you want to stay tied up to fear. If you want to stay tied up to doubt, if you want to stay tied up to unbelief, if you want to stay tied up to a pharaoh that have manipulated you, that have controlled you, that have blinded you, he said, I can't use you. He said, but the world has need of you, and I have need of you. Who who will be the little coat that will let me ride? this new covenant in, that this world will see that there's still a loving God that is still healing and delivering and saving the lost. Who, who, who will let me ride on them and let them know that there are still mantles that rest upon the body of Christ? That they, who will let me ride on them that they will feel the warmth of my presence, that even as they enter the threshold of a place, that people would know that God have just stepped in the room because he came inside of the coat that he was riding on. God said, who will let me, who will let me, who will let me? He said, so tell them, son, I have need of them. Too many things have tied us down. He said, but I'm commanding them to be loose now. And if anybody wants to know why they're being loose, it's because the master have need of them. And I'm just going to stop right here for a moment, and I'm going to give it back to the woman of God to see if she have anything to say. Amen. But but I want, I want you to know, people, that God got need of you. He has need of your people. He, he wants to ride on you. In other words, he wants he want his glory. He wants his glory to usher into a place, not flesh, not all this charismatic stuff that we have seen, but his glory. His glory. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on, for no man can hinder thee. Glory be to God, apostle. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. My God, today, I do believe that the Spirit of the Lord has spoken very accurately. Amen. We thank God. Hallelujah. Truly, nothing comes before God. He is the Alpha and the Omega, man of God. And I'm, I really am just, my God, today, the Word, and we've been talking about what we sense the Spirit of the Lord is, is wanting to happen in the church, amen, and observing some things. But truly, 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 this scripture is being fulfilled. This is prophecy, amen. Both the old and the new covenant are being tied together, hallelujah. And the coat representing the new covenant, oh, my God, today, he wants us to come forth. I am ready to rise. I am ready to be written. Amen. I am ready for him to use me. Glory to God. And with that being said, I praise God that he is indeed coming back. Hallelujah. He wants us to walk and to live and to operate in a place of triumph and victory. 
he is still our deliverer and healer, and the blood still works, people of God. Man of God, I turn it over back to you as the Spirit of the Lord would have you to go forth, and even if it is to pray for the people, amen, or to give some closing words, amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. I just want to encourage that person that might be up under the sound of my voice. And you did not realize while it seemed like you had been restricted. You don't realize while it seemed like you had just been stuck over in the corner where nobody called you to do anything. You thought they did not let you use your gift because they was intimidated of you. No, they weren't intimidated of you. You, you. Ain't none of us got nothing to be intimidated of. You did not realize that you was tied up until the master came at the appointed time to get you. He wanted you to realize that I kept you there so that when you be, because if you let man loose you, you'll run wild. You'll run wild without restraints. You'll run wild like a novice. You'll wreck yourself. Because that's a way that seems right unto a man, but at the end, it leads to death. He said, so I kept you there until the appointed time, so that when I lose you, my God, and have need of you, you will know what your purpose is. You'll stop running from prayer line to prayer line. You'll stop running from prophet to prophet. You'll stop running comforts to comforts. Because, see, you run there because you're trying to figure out, well, what do God want me to do? Well, if you sit there tired long enough and understand that, he got you there until he come and get you. It's already been spoken that my thoughts of you are good and not evil to bring you to an expected end. He but already designed for you to be a victorious one. So why are you? Worrying? Why are you crying? Why do you feel like you're unloved and you're unappreciated? No, no, just wait. The master, he has need for you. He didn't want you to be contaminated with flesh. He did not want man to say that they made you. He didn't want man to take his glory. You ain't been used yet. But guess what? He's getting ready to call you forth now. Are you ready to let him ride you? <laughs> Are you ready to let him ride you? And then there might be someone that might don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. This was the whole purpose that he came. He came through the Mount of Olives. They threw the palm trees. They celebrated him just to lead him to the cross so that he can be crucified so that he can die, so that we may live. He took our punishment, my God. He took our sins off of us and put it on himself so that we no longer have to be bound to sin. And it's a simple prayer. All you have to do is say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you, a sinner, and then for those that are bike slider, I come as a bike slider, one that have known you, God, but I've turned my back. I want you to know he's still married to the bike slider. Say, Father, I can't save myself, but I know that you can save me. And according to your word, that if I confess out of my mouth and believe in my heart that Christ, the one that came riding on that coat, if, if if I confess out of my mouth and believe in my heart that he is Lord and Savior, I shall be saved. So today, God, I come as a sinner. I come as a backslider. Lord, bring me back home. Take me back. Receive me back into the place that you first received me, God. And now I'll open up my heart, and I ask you to come in and sup with me. In the name of Jesus. And if you prayed that prayer, glory be to God, welcome to the body of Christ. And I pray that God will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. I pray that he will lead you to a ministry that believe in the fivefold ministry, that believe in the gifts of the Spirit, one that will let God be in charge. 
not man. And now, for you that thought that your dream wouldn't go nowhere, thought your ministry wouldn't go nowhere, thought your business wouldn't go nowhere, you that have been seen like you've been tied down and restricted, I'm here to let you know I speak to you today. For the Lord have commanded you to be loosed. He have commanded you to be loose from limited thinking, to be loose from doubt and unbelief, to be loose from fear. For I have not given you fear, but I have given you power, love, and a sound mind. For a perfect love casted out all fear. He's commanding you to be loose from sickness and disease and everything that will hinder you from fulfilling his purpose. For the Lord said, I have need of thee. So today, Stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free. And be not entangled again with the yokes of bondage. I command you to be loose from every Pharaoh leader, from every leader that have tried to, to control you, every leader that have tried to disrespect you, every leader that have tried to speak word curses on you. And I come against every word curse that have ever been spoken over your life because you walked away from something that God was calling you from, and they tried to curse you, and it have had you in bondage, and it have had you in fear, and you thought you were going to die. You thought you were going to get sick. You thought this wasn't going to work. I reverse it in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says, bless and curse not. And what God has blessed King, no man cursed. So I speak the word of God over your life, for it is written that no man can curse what God has blessed. So be blessed. Be empowered to prosper. Be empowered to allow God to ride in, oh, my God, on you as he used you to make a difference. In this hurt world, I love you today, and I give God the praise and honor and glory, and I tell you to be free now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And beloved, don't forget these words, for the Lord has need of you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you, man of God, for that word. My God, today, people of God, hallelujah. The fear of the Lord does not want you to be contaminated with the flesh. He is ready to call you forth. Do not doubt what God has released today in this hour, in your hearing, in the midst of the chaos. We are going to be shifted into a new thing. We are being shifted into a new season. Hallelujah. I believe the Spirit of the Lord is cutting off the enemy of your mind right now. Listen, God is going to do a new thing. We are at our place of victory, and we receive it now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you again, Prophet Ken Jackson, for obeying the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for this word of encouragement and liberty. People of God, the Lord has commanded you to be loose. Hallelujah. Glory to God from fear and limited thinking and everything that would hinder you. In the name of Jesus, let him ride you. Hallelujah. Ride in and let the Lord use you in this season. Believe God. Believe God. He will take you from where you are now to where you are to be and fulfill your purpose and destiny. My God, today. Hallelujah. And, Abba Father, and, now you know, this broadcast. Yes, sir. And you know what, and you know what Apostle? You know, in closing, for you all that understand, the Bible says, who the sun set free is free indeed. And it was the Amen. sun that set you free. Not your apostle, not your prophet, Ooh. not your pastor, not your teacher, Come not on. your evangelist. It was the Lord. The Bible says, who the sun set free is free indeed. The reason why you keep going back in bondage, the reason why you keep being bound, because you keep giving credit to your your pastor and your prophet and your pastor and your teacher. They can't deliver nothing. They can't even de- we can't even deliver ourselves. So stop acting like we great deliverers, because we're Come not. Come on now. The Bible says, "Who the sun set free 
I don't think I've seen my name in there, nowhere in there. And I don't think I've seen nobody else that I know name in there. So, so who the sun set free, it's free indeed. Now go and stand fast in the liberty. Well, Christ have made you free. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. My name's not there either, prophet. Amen. I can't, I can't deliver nobody. Hallelujah. It's the anointing and only the anointed one, the only one. Yeshua is able to do that. Glory to God. Abba, Father, I just thank you for what you've done on today. Hallelujah. We give you the glory for all that has been orchestrated this day. And those who are under the sound of our voices now and later on the rebroadcast, Father God, we thank you that they too will experience a great manifestation of your power and your presence. Touch the life and nature of God within them now. Oh, my God, today, change is taking place now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I want to say thank you for stopping by again for another Shabbat Saturday. Thank you, Dr. Timmy Kim and Elation Radio. Thank you, Prophet Ken Jackson. Amen. Both of you have such huge hearts. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I give you both the honor, amen, that is due you as God's people. Hallelujah. And leaders in the name of Jesus. I want to say thank you, Spricker Radio and Apple and YouTube, and for this platform again, Elation Radio. We bless the Lord for you. Amen. Listen, people of God, continue to obey God. Hear his voice and the voice of a stranger you will not follow in the name of Jesus. Thank you again for this Shabbat Saturday. Hallelujah. And all come back next Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another Shabbat Saturday at this great Elation radio station. Hallelujah. May the Lord God continue to use you, Dr. Timmy Kim. We love you so much. Now please close us out. Shalom. Nothing can stop me Nothing can block me I am a winner Look at your name and say I seek the victory Nothing can stop me Nothing can block me Victory. You gotta speak victory over your life. Nothing can stop me. Yeah, nothing can block me. Yeah, I am a winner. I speak the victory. Nothing can stop me. Nothing can block me.
the victory over the enemy. 